one thing Guardiola doesn't do is rush players. If you've yeah. seen how he has developed Foden, for example, and you see where Foden is right now. Obama <laughs> revels in a team which is chaotic team, where it's more of a transitional sort of system where like he can be the focal point. <laughs> City won Nottingham Forest. Probably some people thought it'd be a banana skin given, you know, they have the us against them mentality right now, Nottingham Forest, but didn't turn out to be that way. They played well. So game was fine, City won. Uh, but I want to ask you, given their winger situation, right? We saw Jack Grealish, Doku. Doku was replaced at halftime. Jack Grealish didn't have a great game. They brought in Oscar Bob and Bernardo Silva were playing on the wings. So clearly they lacked someone to make a difference. And in comes Cole Palmer. Make a case for why Guardiola let Palmer leave. Case for that, I mean, you can't have every player in the world, right, in your team. At some point in time, you'll have to let a good players leave. It happens all the time. He let Jesus, Zinchenko, Sterling. Cole Palmer, let's be real, he wasn't really starting for City. He was not going to be a starter. That was mm-hmm. not happening. Yeah. It, was not, it was just not going to happen. It still won't happen, even if even if we now know that he's a very talented, good player. But still, I don't think he's... Do you think uh, he won't, I mean, he won't, do you think he won't, he wouldn't have started? I mean, hindsight is 2020, but Doku hasn't had a great season. Grealish has been basically out of the team or injured. And they don't really have another winger, out and out winger if I look at their team sheet. See, I'll, I'll tell you this though, right? One thing Guardiola doesn't do is rush players. If you've yeah. seen how he has done, you know, he has kind of developed Foden, for example, over the Prime example. Yeah, there is every reason why maybe Foden came in, burst into the scene like what, three years ago maybe? And he hasn't played a good amount of matches in the last couple of years and there were all these pundits and everyone saying that Guardiola is hampering his development, he's doing all of this and, you know, Foden's kind of is supposed to be the next person, local guy, all of that. But he didn't listen to any of them. He just kind of did his part and you see where Foden is right now, right? I think that's basically, that's the patience what, you know, he doesn't differentiate, right? And I think, and again, I think Guardiola himself admitted that in one of these interviews that he wanted Cole Palmer to stay. He really wanted him to develop more and I think to kind of understand his methods more and all of that. But that guy, I don't know what his associations are with the club and everything. Maybe he had better options in a, in a, in a, in a different club. And maybe right now, he's shining so much because of the dysfunction that is there at the Chelsea. He's he's a yeah. good talent, absolutely. I'm not saying no. But say if he had gone to a different club or if Chelsea were more structural, more structured and everything, he wouldn't have been in the spotlight so much. Like maybe his goals would have been shared by other strikers or other people and everything. It's it's just, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I as I said, hindsight is twenty twenty. I get that. But I think right now, there is no way to say that Palmer would have added more to this team. There's a reason why Guardiola didn't play him. He wanted him to develop more. And I think it would have taken a couple of years for him, definitely. And I understand why Palmer wanted to move, but that's it. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, to be honest, I remember doing a pod mm-hmm. and we discussed whether Cole Palmer was overrated or underrated. Yeah. And obviously, by my reaction, you could tell what I chose. I saw, I thought that he was overrated, like 40 million for a player who hasn't played anything. Right, right. Uh, but then look at him now. He's all, he's at the top of the ch- goal scoring charts. Maybe now Haaland took over because he yeah. scored today. But uh, he's right up there and he's definitely young player of the year, for me at least. I don't see anybody else coming close to him or even making a dent. But I do agree too. I mean, you make an interesting point about like Chelsea not being. Uh, as structured, right? Uh, that kinds of flows into the fact that the teams playing against them, they think that they have a chance. Mm-hmm. So they leave spaces open. They leave, uh, you know, the Chelsea to play and come at them. And that kind of adds into the fact that he's, he's scoring. He's on a great scoring run. Yeah, so, yeah, he's he's overperforming this season for sure. Let's see where what his consistency is. With because I'm, I'm 100% sure there'll be a new manager at Chelsea next season, and let's see like how. He, oh wow! Yeah, no positive for you. Uh, no man, I think it, Pochettino is done. I think it, there is no way he's going to continue with this kind of football and everything. So yeah, okay, we'll see. We'll see next season. To be honest, I mean, I, I have zero sympathies for a club like Chelsea, right? Like they should get relegated. So not going to play devil's advocate here. Although this pod would seem otherwise, given the topics that we are lined up next. But I do feel Pochettino is not done. A bad job like he's a he's not a title winning manager so obviously he lost the final and all of those things were you know reflecting bad on his tv but i think he's steadied the ship in a decent enough way if they had just converted their chances they would have been better at least the underlying metrics says that right i I think the answer is right there what you said right if he's not a title winning manager do you think chelsea want him like if if, if, if you're not competing for a title if you're like eighth and ninth and tenth if you, okay, yeah. I understand if Pochettino at least was like at fourth or fifth, that 
with Spurs and Villa and everything, if he's competing, I get that. But you see some of their performances. You see the recent performance against Arsenal. How can you make yeah. players for him, right? No, there's no way. I mean, I was just going to say that the underlying metrics are all pretty decent. Like, they would be 5th, 6th for them. Yeah. So, there's a big finishing issue there. Plus, also, the squad is constructed in a way wherein, like, you know, last season, at the end of last season, there was a lot of talk and chatter about their squad being bloating and you can't just manage those many players. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same right now. They have, like, 10 wingers and you can only play 2. So, you have, like, 7 central midfield fielders and you can only play one or two so like how do you manage all of those things plus the injuries so yeah i think it's a bit harsh to sack him but i do see a point of why would anybody sack him like it's it's one of those things like i wouldn't begrudge them for doing one way or the other he hasn't brought structure to the team What's that? Yeah. About I'm saying this has been a hard digress. So Palmer, <laughs> I feel like, revels in a team which is, you know, a chaotic team where yeah. um, where it's more of a transitional sort of system where, like, uh, he can be the focal point. This sort of, like, zonal, Guardiola-based, you know, possession-based thing, he doesn't have the discipline for that. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that is why. Maybe that's why we've seen him excel. Maybe Guardiola knew that in my system, he's not going to be that great. In my system, Foden, these kind of people who can hold the width, who can be more disciplined. They are the type of players who can play, but this guy can't. Maybe he's like, great. Guardiola has let many great players leave. It's not yeah. just, he's not the first one. And sometimes it's just a matter of how many good players you have in your team and you know you have to trust them and you have to let people go. I don't think he wanted a lot of players to leave, but some at some point in time, you have to let players go. If Foden co- comes in sometime, you know, next... Uh, Next season, if he's not playing enough and he comes in, I think Guardiola will let him go. Guardiola is very secure in his own yeah. world. He's yeah, not yeah, an yeah. insecure manager. So, yeah. yeah. I think That's... two players he definitely wanted gone were Jesus and Zinchenko. And we just had the bad end of the bargain. 